This week, we interview Omar De Freyas from Fratello Cigars. Will's going to point out some Baker Spice and unsweetened marshmallows in his Stogies of the Week. <laughs> I'm going to talk about some Padron and yet another slightly infused cigar. All that and more, so stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Paying homage to the mecca of tobacco, Pinar del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR cigar factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut light and taste what they love to do. Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's discovery of tobacco during his expedition of the New World. This medium to full-bodied cigar shows off the kind of exquisite construction expected by master blender AJ Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler, bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you with spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the New World, flavors become more complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between A.J. Fernandez and his father Ishmael, making this cigar stand out in the A.J. Fernandez line. To commemorate the union of father and son, A.J. Fernandez is offering you this masterpiece at an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. A.J. Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year. The New World, Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 168 for December 17th, 2015. And if you're looking for Waldo, you found him. <laughs> I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. <laughs> Join the elf on the shelf. The always. elf on the shelf. <laughs> Join here in studio by none other than Stogie Santa. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, Stogie Santa. Will, I, I, I'm going to go over to you now on the lines via Skype. I know you had to run out. I know sometimes you get older, you have to go to the bathroom more frequently. That's no, totally I didn't, fine. No, I didn't have my plug, and the, and the power thing <laughs> whoa, started whoa, to whoa, go. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you didn't have your what? <laughs> your plug? <laughs> too okay. much Too much information. Okay, anyway, well, anyway. I'm glad you got your plug now. Though. That's it was like, yeah, 2% all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, like, boy. I'm usually at 2%, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Will. You got to okay. be 100% for the Stogie hey, Geek that's Show. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all, I know is, all, all I know is, um, you know, I didn't get the memo that we were doing Dr. Seuss night tonight. So I, like, <laughs> but, uh, I, bust, I did that joke already on him today. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes. Okay. Sam, I am. So, uh, interesting, last show of the year, we're not going to do top 10 cigars mm -hmm. on this show. 
We pre-recorded my top 10 cigars. We're going to release them later. Will's going to do his in January. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing a teaser. But we do have lots of fun things to talk oh, about. Excellent. Including a fabulous guest, Omar DeFreyas from Fratello Cigars. Omar, welcome back to the show. Guys, thank you for having me. This is yeah. fun. It's always fun to come around and, uh, you know, have a chance to uh, talk cigars with you guys. And uh, I, uh, I hold you guys uh, in dear to my heart because uh, you guys were one of the first ones to... Uh, you know, to reach out to us when we came out with Fratello and uh, and, uh, and 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 wanting to do a preview on us and wanting to know a little bit more about our company. So it's always fun to come back, man. After two and a half years, and uh, although we've done it again, I've, you know, before that, but it's always fun to come back and talk cigars. Now, Omar, uh, I lit up a Fratello cigar uh, that I don't think I've had before, which I find kind of wow. hard to believe. I don't know if I I, I had to look through my my archive, but. Um, I'm smoking the uh, Bianco. Stoke mm -hmm. Santa, you're smoking the original Fratello. In Correct. The, looks like the Robusto. Uh, sorry, we're taking drink orders now. Uh, yes, please. I want one. <laughs> yeah, Omar wants an old-fashioned, too. We can send that over the, over the Internet. That would be great. Uh, now, Will, which Fratello cigar did you, did you light up? I did not light one up, but here's the funny story. I went up to uh, oh, a here cigar we go. store. No, it's just, just, you I know, it's a simple the... question, Will. It doesn't involve a story. What I are you smoked, smoking tonight? I smoked it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to go buy it, right, and I ended up smoking it at the shop today, and I realized I, I had gotten it for the show. But I'm smoking one of your favorites, Paul, the E.P. Carrillo Reserva. Mm -hmm. uh, the the new, wave, Reserva. new Wave Reserva? Yeah, new Wave Reserva, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Will. <laughs> That was, uh, but it was, yeah, it was, I went because I knew I didn't have any, right? I said, well, let me go up. I'm going up to this. Why did this you store. just buy one? Why wouldn't you buy a line I'm sample? I'm stressing Multiple, going, right? Will yeah, send I, me I, a Fratello. I, I can't find it. I'm stressing. I, I went next door. I bought some Fratello because I'm like, I want to smoke Fratello on the show. If I don't, Will's oh, going to call had... me and yell at me tomorrow. Uh -huh. well, and here we go. At... Now you're not smoking Fratello. Now I get to call you and yell at you tomorrow. <laughs> well, I, was up, I was actually up at J&R, the store by your dad's house, right? Yeah. Kind of, and I. Part of it is I, I went to pick up some cigars. Well, I was with a good friend of mine, um, and I wanted him to try that cigar. And so he picked one up, too, and I smoked it with him, not thinking that's why I got the cigar. So I got back, and I'm like, oh, shoot. And, and I don't live close to that store, as you know. I got you. That's wow. a long story. So, Omar, <laughs> Omar <laughs> tell us about the Bianco. Oh. Well, guys, the, uh, we released Bianco this year uh, at the IPCPR in 2015, and we released it a month prior. Uh, we did a, we did a, um, we, we blended the cigar over a year ago. It, it's been, it was a lot of fun to make because I wanted to, uh, I wanted to uh, spice things up a little bit with my, uh, with my sophomore, which is basically what Bianco is. Um, we wanted to make it entirely different from our core line. We wanted, we wanted the cigar. To have a bolder, uh, you know, you know, keep keep on keep on one thing that I personally enjoy about our cigars. I, I love tasty cigars. You know what I mean. I don't have, I don't have a, a, a pretense about enjoying something that is you know super full body or I, I I like tastiness. I like flavor. And so we achieved that with uh, with the Bianco and um, a little bit about that blend that I think you'll find very interesting is. We blended this cigar with over five different uh, um, kinds of uh, tobacco, five different regions. Um, the uh, the wrapper is San Andres Negro, uh, uh, Mexican wrapper. He's got a Dominican Olor binder, uh, tobacco from Peru on the filler, same Peruvian tobacco that is present on the, on the original Fratello line, this line, uh, the, uh, on the original line, because I'm such a fan of uh, Peruvian tobacco. It's so sweet. It's got a nice... Uh, it's got a nice aroma to it, and uh, and we blended it with two different kinds of flavor. That's what that's what a lot of people when they're trying to pick up some notes on the cigar. Some guy says it's got a nice dark cocoa to it, and I was just uh, at a shop to that tonight, and uh, uh, we were discussing this cigar, that cigar, that same cigar tonight. You know, it's got a nice dark cocoa, in it, dark cocoa to it. It's got a red, you know, red spice, red uh, pepper to it that is very present thanks to the two uh, ligeros that we utilize. We utilize the uh, uh, Pennsylvania broadleaf ligero on that. And uh, we also utilize the uh, Esteli Ligero, uh, which is uh, which tend to have some of those notes, and it came out beautiful. Well, you tell me, Paul, what do you think? I, I see, <clears throat> excuse me, it has tons of flavor right from the start is what I was commenting on mm -hmm. before. As soon as I lit <clears throat> it up, it, it didn't take any time to get warmed up. I mean, it was the flavors were right there in your face. Um, I, I see what you're saying. It's got that little bit of spiciness. Um, and I find it interesting that you've got the Pennsylvania broadleaf uh, Lajero in it, right? Is that what he said? Bro yes. Pennsylvania broadleaf yep. Lajero. 
that can be that can kind of overpower a blend. Some of the Pennsylvania tobacco is so strong. I find that in previous blends it tends to overpower, but I feel like blenders have kind of come around and really been able to work with that tobacco and, and do some amazing things with it. Mm. I think the same, same, same thing uh, uh, holds true for uh, uh, that Mexican San Andreas Negro wrapper. I mean, I think uh, 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 they're, 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 you know, it, like any other kind of tobacco, you want to play with the cigar. You want to play with the blend enough that you are able to, 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 to obviously come up with a blend that will, you know, suit a portion of the uh, of the uh, of the population. You don't need to please everybody, but you do need to make sure that there is there is that market, and there is there is that market that is more into a more of a meaning to full, uh, uh, you know, uh, some darkness to the tobacco, which I think this cigar has, and uh, and a very tasty one. So we I think we, we I think we achieved it. It's a uh, it burns very, very, very well. It holds its ashes. It's, it's, it's got, it's got the, it's got the right components to it. No doubt. And as we spoke about a line sampler, what I was, we had that discussion a couple of weeks ago, and it worked so true with, with Omar's cigar because, <clears throat> excuse me, a gentleman would come in and ask me what the favorite Vitola is, and I don't like to say that because I, you don't know if he's going to be on the same, same, same uh, page, same yeah. page, right? No, I agree. And he bought the line sampler, and he came back, and mm -hmm. ironically. What what size Omar do you think and and uh, uh, is the largest selling size on the Maduro at uh, our shop? I I would have to say the Bianco one, six sixty. The really yeah on the original line or on the Bianco on the Bianco. Hmm. I'll be darned. Really? Yeah, see that's well, what I'm that, that see that, that's what I'm talking huh? about. Now the, the number one I I I told him this is what I thought, but I'm glad. See what would have happened. Now that's the one he didn't like as much. You in see, this, in which this uh, is the uh, the one. You see this is the one. This right. is in the, would you call this a Corona Gorda? I would say more of a it's a Lonsdale. Lonsdale, Lonsdale. Right. Okay. Right. But what that's the point I'm getting back to Omar. This, see what I'm saying? Sometimes you can your particular way of liking a Vitola, Vitola, and you're trying to tell the person who's buying that cigar this is what you like. And now I would have suggested that size. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's why I always say buy a line sampler, yep. decide for yourself. Yeah. And this way here, he, did, he chose, not that he disliked it, he just liked the 660, and that's the, and, yeah. and it's ironic, that's our largest selling size. I, I think there's a, if there's one theme that we keep coming back to this year more and more is just how much <coughs> size me. matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how you may mm -hmm. try one cigar in one line in one size and say, well, I don't really like that, and therefore, a lot of people come to the conclusion, well, then I don't like that cigar line. And my challenge to them now is, well, how can you say that? Like, what if you were to try another size? You might like it mm -hmm. much better. And I found not to ever dismiss uh, yep. a line or a brand or whatever because of just one particular size. You really do have to, as you say, Stokey said, do that line. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. amazing. And then, now, not that this gentleman uh, persuaded anybody to do this, you know, right. to, to go with the 660. And I would say 60% of my customers that, I, that come in the store that I don't know, maybe even higher, I always, no matter whose cigars it is, I always get them to buy a line sampler. Mm. You know, I'm not talking someone like Padron or something like that, but when you yeah, look at, you know, yeah. you know a, a, new, a new company and, and you look at it, they have enough Vitolas where it's not going to break the bank, you mm -hmm. know, and they go like that. And, it, and I think it's, it does justice for, that, for the manufacturer. It really does. So they can pick out their f favorite Vitola. There's nothing skewed by mm -hmm. my personal like. The most important is what the customer likes, not what my thoughts are. Right. Yeah, and I think oh, with oh, Omar's oh. line, uh, with both the Fratello and the, the Bianco, there, there's some really good nuances with the sizes. So mm -hmm. maybe, it's not, maybe you do like the size. Try one of the other sizes, particularly in the Fratello and the Fratello Bianco, because... Mm -hmm. There's something else it's going to offer, is what I find. Mm. I agree 100, oh, percent uh, Will. It, it, you know, it's funny because as I as I look at uh, you know the launch of the of the uh, of the Bianco, which was in June, uh, and I see the you know it's it's always interesting to see you know out, out of all of the Vitolas, which one is sort of setting the trend for the other one. Um, and it was very interesting. The first uh, in the first go around, we launched it to about you know 10, 12 retailers nationwide, and um, in got a reorder from the majority of them within about a you know month at, uh, at the tops and it was interesting because most of the reorders were on the Bianco one so all of a sudden I go to the IPCPR show we did amazing at the show we got a lot of new retailers 
that a lot of people that uh, that have been following uh, our journey for the last two and a half years coming over and uh, you know interested in the line. We go over and we uh, uh, I look at the second trend and the second go around of uh, you know putting the cigars out on the market. And then it was Bianco number three, uh, which is the five five fifty six robusto extra that a lot of people were loving. And so um, then and, and I was getting most of my reorders. I was getting on the Bianco number three, but then on the third iteration, fourth iteration. You know, all of this. You know, all of the numbers started to even up, uh, which was very obviously very interesting for me because it's it's funny how you you come out. I didn't come out with the conventional sizes. I came out with the sizes where I thought the blend had not only the most differentiation, but it worked best. Um, I, I I try my best to making it in a smaller ring gauge on the forty. You know, than the forty four because of the but because of the fillers that we had, mm. um, we didn't. We were not getting that complexity, but. You know, the majority, you know, when I when I when I put it up to that 56, which I thought was, you know, sort of, you know, getting close to 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 losing a little bit of that complexity, you know, it, it was it was it was working an entirely different way, uh, just like it was on the six by 50 Toro. So it was very, very interesting. All of the numbers were all over the place at the beginning. And all of a sudden now they're all leaving it out. And, and I'm and I'm able to now set a little bit of a better trend and planification for going for 20, 2016. Mm -hmm. So Omar, what what other sizes did you play around with in this blend that maybe didn't work? We played a uh, we played with a uh, a fifty eight. We played with a sixty. Uh, we played with a sixty four because I wanted to, you know, maybe juggle in into that area and see what the effect was, especially because it's a, such a dark wrapper, such a flavorful wrapper, and it wasn't working. Um, there 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 could be something coming in next year on uh, uh, on an extension for Bianco. Um, I may have to increase some of the lihera that we utilize from uh, Esteli and some of the lihera that I utilize from uh, from uh, Pennsylvania to see how it can sort of get to the complexity that I really was looking for on this entire lineup. But that 44, that 50, and that 56 was right on spot. For I said us. 60. I meant to say 56. But where did where did you start with the blend, <clears throat> Omar? Did you start by saying, "Well, I, I got this really great wrapper," or did you start with some of the fills? Like, where did you start? Uh, with the blend process, you know, f you know, for any for any brand, uh, uh, it really is about what's the uh, what's your target audience. Like for me, it was you know what 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 target am I trying to 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 look for now? You know what I mean? Um, a lot of companies right off the bat, some you know sometimes they come out with uh, mild, medium, medium to full or full body. Um, I wanted. I've never been too driven by by sort of uh you know consumer demands or whatnot because if that would have been the case i would have launched a uh you know a mild to medium smoke which tends to be more popular but when we blended when we were working on the different vitolas working on the different blends to come out with uh, fratello i wanted darkness out of the tobacco i wanted sort of like a dark cocoa you know and and and, and i wanted something that uh, was obviously starkly different from my original line. It tends to be very melodic. It has a lot of flavor. It's got a lot of, you know, it's, it's very well balanced. So um, so when we came up with this particular blend, um, there was a, a tobacco that was available to us, which was the San Andres Negro wrapper um, that, you, that you see on the Bianco um, that I absolutely fell in love with. When we started playing with that tobacco, it was giving me that barnyard. It was giving me... Yeah, uh, it you know when we started blending with the different fillers, it was just it was just working, and we spent a long time working on this cigar, uh, mm -hmm. even over close to the end as we were uh, assembling our team to uh, to do the tasting on the tobacco. Uh, we did some small changes uh, to make sure that uh, you know the team that we were working with were able to pick up certain nuances that I was able to pick up, and very interestingly, that was the case. And uh, most of the people that helped me. Um, you know, finalize that test blend uh, uh, towards the end, you know, ended up choosing the exact same cigar that I did. And I value a lot of those guys, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Does this share the same binder or a different binder from your from your other cigar? This is this is the same binder as the as the one that won and basically the 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 that basically was selected by the test team. So this was the exact same binder. And it's a popular binder. Yes. Yes, it is. Olor Dominicano. It's uh, so much flavor. It's got it's got that nice aroma to it that I personally appreciated. I wanted to work with some Dominican tobacco, um, but I didn't want to come up and just work with Dominican tobacco because I am Dominican myself. I wanted to. There was uh, there was this particular Olor Dominicano that I thought was phenomenal, and uh, 
Uh, we blended it with uh, with a jalapa seco uh, on the binder that I thought was that worked actually pretty good. Uh, but it was this Dominican binder that actually did it to the whole different level. Mm. No, that's cool. Will you get more questions for Omar? Yes. Yeah, so, um, in terms of this particular line with the Bianca, one thing I noticed that you did kind of the opposite of the trend is um, I'm smoking this Connecticut Shade cigar right now, right. and it has a white band, which has kind of become this de facto, you know, hey, light color band for the light lighter cigar. But with the dark cigar, you went with a white band and called it Bianca. What was the rationale behind that? It, it was, it was, I needed the, I needed the cigar to, to pop up. And it was, uh, it was a very simple, for me, it was super simple. I wanted the, um, I wanted the, the band to, to really, you know, uh, when you're looking through the shelves and you're looking through the different cigars that you can say, Hey, wow, what is that? This is a, I wanted to sort of play with the, with the, with the human eye. I wanted to play with that perception um of you know you expect like you said a wide band and uh to be more in sync with uh with a uh a mild to medium cigar and uh i wanted to play with that perception and it actually worked i mean i i get that question a lot it's uh why the white band i thought it was you know and then the dark rapper was throwing me off it's like well thank you and, but then you <laughs> called it white you, but then you it. called it white as opposed to dark bianco right. is yeah so that was even another <clears throat> unusual thing Right, and it was, uh, and it was really because of the band. Uh, you know, I'm not that smart. I literally just said, "It's like, you know, it's got a white label. We'll call it, you know, Bianco White. I mean, Fratello, uh, Fratello Bianco, which means white, or Fratello White." <laughs> so it was, it was just to basically keep in line. I, I think branding uh, needs to be simple. I think people need to understand it uh, when you explain it to them, and they say, "Why? So why the white?" And it's like, well, it's a, it's a white label, so I call it Fratello Bianco. And to keep obviously with the tra with the uh, Italian tradition that we have started to uh, to this point, you know, with my the name of my company being Fratello, which you brought, which is a brother in Italian, I kept on that line, and it actually worked pretty good. Now, there's a fourth size of the Bianco that kind of floats around. Why don't you tell us about that one? <laughs> <laughs> you put a little preview on that one, huh? Um, so. We've been working on, um, so I'll tell you a little bit about a story about uh, the Fratello Boxer, which is a cigar that we launched in 2014, and it has become one of my best-selling cigars in the U.S. It's, we do an enormous amount of volume uh, on a very interesting shape. Uh, we came out with a box press torpedo, which is a six and a quarter by, 50, by 52, and uh, we modified the filler slightly to make the cigar to, 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 to come out with a flavor profile that I personally appreciated out of the original line, which is that middle point where it has a lot of creaminess on the cigar. And Mark, you can you can tell me if I'm wrong on this one or not, but as the cigar begins on the Fratello line, it's got a nice pepper at the beginning, very tasty, and all of a sudden that pepper, and that, that sort of flavor profile starts dying down and the mm -hmm. cigar in the middle of the part starts getting you know, a little sweeter. It's got, it's got you know, some of that creaminess going on to the tobacco. Uh, and I personally love that. And so what I wanted to do with the Fratello Boxer is I wanted to sort of, you know, extend that through the, throughout the entire cigar. And we did it. And it was very, very successful. We utilized the same binder, wrapper, and filler. We just played with the filler a little bit differently. And it came out very good. What we're trying to do now, um, and we're working on it as we speak, actually, is uh, we're, we're looking to potentially release uh, what we call the, uh, the Bianco Boxer which would be uh, same size, six and a quarter uh, by 52 uh, box press torpedo. And, uh, and we're looking, we're playing with the, with the filler of the tobacco. Uh, and this time around, I want, to, I want to come out with, remember that pepper that you mentioned, Paul, at the beginning? I want to sort of extend that a little bit more towards the entire cigar. On Bianco, as you can probably pick up, there's some sweetness kicking in right now, and that sweetness sort of carries through the entire cigar. I want to sort of spice it up the little the blend a little bit more. Um, and we're working on it this week. So hopefully that'll be something coming in the next year. So I got a confession, Omar. Actually, I didn't know about this. Uh, I was actually talking about the event cigar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm so sure you did You guys well, hold sure the preview on this one, huh? I really didn't. <laughs> That's okay. It'll, it'll, it'll but, I was, but I was going to ask you if you were, thought about boxing the Bianco. So it was a... That was going to be yes anyway. But, yeah, actually, I was talking. Yeah. I know you have a 5x44 in the event. 
It, I do, and it's 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 a beautiful little Corona uh, mm -hmm. Coronita. I, I I personally, this is, I the reality is I blended that cigar for me because I love smoking that particular Vitola. I love a five by forty four all day long. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy to 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 translate into sales, uh, especially because the name of the game in the industry is you know Robusto Toro sixty. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I do see a little bit of that trend actually going down on the six by 60, but, uh, but I do see that. I do see that, uh, that, you know, that five by 44 was meant for me, was meant for me to, you know, to smoke it on events and stuff like that. Cause I love that particular Vitola and I love that size. But, uh, uh, when I started putting it out on people and people were, you know, having smoking the, the event exclusive, um, they've been asking me, it's like, why don't you release this in a, you know, in a, in a, why don't you do a full blown release on this cigar? And I'm like, eh. I'm not a big fan of multiple skew, multiple skew items. I want uh, Fratello to move on, you know, on the current shelves that it has and the current space that it has on the people's humidors. Um, so, but who knows? You know, the man dictates. <laughs> um, you were actually on uh, episode 74. We were talking about that earlier. That episode was titled Serpent Divided. Go back and, and check that one out in, uh, in the archives. Wow. That was that was around shower curtain time. That was um I think broadcast from next door at the Havana Cigar Club. You sure? If my memory serves me correctly. Yes. Hmm. I don't have the video handy, but I'm uh, pretty whatever. sure. I'm sure you know better than we do. We can bring <laughs> back bring back the shower curtains just for yeah, you. Yeah, just just for that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I met Omar. When he came down to the shop mm -hmm. and uh, didn't recognize him. How can you not recognize of all well, people in the industry? Again, as I How said, can you right? not I saw Omar, Omar was in a little box on the screen, and then when I walked in, he was sitting down. Now, granted, his it knees doesn't were like if he sits down. <laughs> <laughs> it always stands up. He's very <laughs> easy to spot. I know Omar now, I see though. Him. I, like, and obviously, I obviously recognize Paul. I'm like, hey, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. I'll go in and say hello. Uh, he looks at me, and he's sort of like, Hey, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, go, good, good. Have you been? Over and I'm, I'm getting this puzzled look out of there. <laughs> and I'm guessing maybe he doesn't recognize me. You got all. the Braden look. <laughs> yeah. Took me into the yeah, show. Hide the expressions very yeah. well. My favorite photo of Omar, he was up at Dave Garofalo's at Two Guys, and he's, he takes a picture with Phil Zengi. Oh, and yeah. it's like, I look at the picture, and I remember what I commented. I said, that picture satisfies my sense of proportion. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Phil and then Omar way up there. <laughs> Phil Zang has got to be at least five foot six. Or no, nah, <laughs> that's that's what he's got his Italian loafers on. He's about yeah. five five. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, and we reviewed the uh, Fratello H Town Lancero. Did I get that yep. right? Mm -hmm. And that's the one that's all, all Peruvian in the filler. Correct. We blended that with only Peruvian tobacco, uh, and it was it was it came out amazing. I mean, we, we blended it. I, I think I might have told you this before, but we put in a little bit of Alijero initially on that on that vitola. But because of the Alijero that we utilize, it's so thick, it's so dark. Um, it, it was and it was burning. It was just burning too weird for us. I mean, it was mm. too slow. The uh, the seco and the wrapper were burning a little bit faster. So we we decided to put all Peruvian tobacco in the fill of the H Town Lancero. Uh, which Jorge has available at, uh, at, his, sto at his store in Stogies, it, uh, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was perfect, and people loved it. People have loved it so much. I'm getting, I'm literally at this point, and this is about a year, a year, close to a year and a half, I want to say. Um, no, it's close to about a year or so that we've released this cigar. And it, we're still getting people say, hey, are you going to release it full time? You know, and uh, we utilize it a lot this year and for our, a lot of our events. And uh, and every time, and I, and I have to stop using it because the requests were, were getting to the point that I'm going to have to release a cigar I already told Jorge, it's just only for you. Right. So uh, so we started using the event exclusive cigar on that, and it was actually working better. <laughs> um, so are you planning to do more store exclusives or um, was, was the H town kind of like, like how did that go for you? How did you come to do a store exclusive and will you do more? I, um, I, I would be open to doing the store exclusives. Uh, I saw that. I saw the news today about uh, Pete Johnson sort of not doing any more store exclusives going forward. Uh, and I thought that was very interesting because we do face similar, uh, similar, uh, 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 production wing saying, ah, you know, this is the, 
you know, another 300 or 400, you know, boxes for a specific cigar when we already have your entire lineup already in full production. And we were working right now. I mean, we, you know, uh, the guys at Hoya Nicaragua, which produce our cigars, uh, we've met already a couple of months back working on what's going to be next year's production, you know, and how does that, how is that going to work? And so, you know, putting in an extra, um, an extra production item, putting in an extra, uh, uh, you know, uh, something that, that is much smaller scale than we've already planned. It does throw production a little bit off and, you know, never, never, never crazy about that. But, you know, the guys at Hoya Nicaragua are amazing uh, and they do an amazing product for us. Uh, so, you know, we, we, I'm sure we'd be able to accommodate some things, um, but not 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 to the point that it's just going to be constant. Uh, Does the the looming FDA regulations weigh into that decision? You think of people starting to back off from store exclusives? I don't know. Uh, I got to tell you, Paul. I'm surprised. I still. I mean, because we are sort of at that edge. Uh, I mean, we're literally looking down at. Okay, so either we go fall down, or there is a path to continue going straight, but. Still, it surprises and amazes me how many uh, how many more new cigars are coming out, how many more new blends, how many. Because logistically, I mean, I, I put down the numbers obviously because this is what I do. I put down the numbers many many times, and logistically, you know, adding a new line or adding a new vitola or adding uh, you know three or four new SKUs to your to your company portfolio is very expensive. So I, I look at it myself and I say, I mean, I, I sometimes I don't understand. Uh, maybe there is a reason for it that some companies are continuing to go out and producing more. But maybe the answer is maybe to your question, Paul, because I think uh, I think there is a you know if there is if there is a uh, if there is an end to the line about when this whole FDA regulation is going to hit, I think we're very close. Uh, and um, it would have surprised me if it's in the next month or so. Hmm. I think, you know, with the case of, and that's <clears throat> the dive brought off of Pete, I think it was a good move for Pete to cut back on the shop Absolutely. exclusives, mm -hmm. but it was surprising that he said he wasn't going to do any more. Um, so I, I think there's a balance that you can do with it. And one can argue that Pete did, he, Pete was one of the like godfathers in terms of how many he did. So, I mean, he really made, opened up that market. Um, but I think also that it's a market that's getting a little saturated too. Yeah. It, it caught like back to Omar's point. That causes a logistic nightmare yeah. for production. You know, I think that's foremost more. I, I'm sure hindsight FDA and everything else. But that that's a production nightmare for yeah, everybody. Yeah, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Logistically, Mark, it is. I, I tell you, we're full production with Hoya and Nicaragua with our cigars. Cigars right now. I mean, we got a team of rollers, you know, dedicated producing cigars for Fratello and our company full time. And, uh, and, and, and taking one of those guys away from our, you know, from our schedule production and whatnot, and now uh, putting them on something a little different. And I'll tell you, like I said, one thing, I'll tell you another, because it's, uh, I'll tell you the example of the Boxer series. Uh, that we released, uh, you know, for the holidays, but it's uh, it takes it takes a toll. It takes a toll not only the production team, but it's for 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 our processing department at Fratello, for uh, um, you know changing the boxes just by adding three new boxes, entirely different shapes as well from the original line. I had to change most of the boxes and most of the ways that we were packing our cigars. You know, usually you get two or three boxes of each size, you know, depending on a reorder. And that just that change alone, I'm not saying that it's super expensive, but I am saying how much more it adds to 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 to, to the processing and processing costs and, 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 and things of that nature. So logistically it ain't cheap. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well said. Um <clears throat> excuse me. So uh Omar, how does that impact you when you go out to the stores, too? Like, how do you balance when you're at all these shops uh, as your line continues to grow and expand? Like, how do you balance what you should push in certain areas or, you know, what your, your latest cigar is versus your, old, <coughs> your older cigar? Um, like, how do you balance? Because you're on the road a lot. I remember the last right. time we talked, you were on the road a lot. Yeah. Like, how do, as your line expands, how do you, how do you market your new line to, to where you're going? I tell you that that that's a great question because I mean as I as I started selling for Bianco in most of our events, um, you know it's it's taking me three times longer to because I like to explain to our customers what the blend is. I like to sit down with them and explain to them how the cigar is going to transition. And when I had um, when I had only uh, the, the the four sizes of 
Othello and the boxer, it was super easy because I would grab one for Othello right. and I would grab one boxer and I would say, hey, let me tell you a little bit about the difference between these two and how they both basically are Italian, although the exact same blend, you know, you know binder, wrapper, or filler, the exact same components, here are these two cigars are different. So it would make the decision making on the consumer, you know, 10 times easier. So this is another part of Marco we were talking about earlier, about logistically as well for the sales team to be able to say, here's two cigars, the choice is very simple. Okay, let me have them both, or let me take a look at one or the other. Now, as I go forward and do all these events, and I have Fratello Bianco, I grab the Fratello Boxer, I grab the original line, and then I grab two sizes of the Bianco. I grab the you know, Bianco 1, because it smokes entirely different from the Bianco 3, which is in smokes entirely different from each other. And I try to tell them that whole difference. That explanation itself I mean, will usually take me 45 seconds to a minute or so per colony, actually, because I do spend the time. Now it's, you know, two minutes. You know, because they want to know about the original line. They have questions about the new line. They want to know why is the Bianco one different from the Bianco three. You know, what? Why didn't I do that with the Bianco with the with the Patello boxer? Am I coming out with the boxer for the Bianco? So, you you're absolutely right on that. I mean, it has taken me much longer. So I've had to make some strategic moves in terms of like you know making the the explanation a little bit faster, but without losing the essence of what I wanted to go uh, seek on the cigar. Mark, Will, more questions for Omar? No. Real quick, real quick. Um, I don't know. Omar's audio seems to have gone south. Yes. I don't know. If yeah, that, it, yeah. Just looking at it, it seems to be bandwidth related. It might be out okay. of our control. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I do have can a question. Can you Omar. see me though? Yeah, we I can, can still see, see you. It's just the yeah, your audio your got audio kind of got a little choppy. Uh oh. Okay. I do have a question for Omar. So we were talking about the boxer, um, and one thing that you've done, Omar, as well as you've taken that boxer. And you've kind of made it into now it's a line of its own. So there's all the sizes that you've added besides that box press torpedo, um, and, and called the Boxer Series. Tell us a little about that. So this is something that we released. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me well? Or? Yeah, it's it's a little better. better. Yeah, yeah it's better. Fantastic, fantastic. So let me tell you guys a little bit about what we released a couple of weeks, uh, two or three weeks back. It was very, very cool. It was something that we put together and. Uh, it's basically uh, this little this little five pack of cigars uh, that we released for a. Um, it was a little bit of it was an interesting project for me because all I really wanted to do was get a chance to introduce more customers, customers that you know during the holidays were just probably looking to you know buy something for for their spouse or for their or for their wives or or, or for their friends or whatnot and introduce them to a to basically something which was very unique and it was a very unique project and I'm trying to open it up over here as well. But it's basically the Boxer series, which is uh which is this cigar. It's like a little cigar uh what you know to, to sort of look like a cigar wooden mold where you basically have a um, five uh cigars in here on this blend. Um it's got basically the Fratello, uh, the Fratello Boxer which again is like my number one bit on Vitola. So I wanted to sort of bring the consumer back after they buy something like this, and then a, a, as a store, as a, uh, um, a, a, a limited edition uh, five pack, and introduce four Vitolas that we started blending it very interestingly. We started basically reducing the amount of Lijero as we went down on the sizes of the cigar. So, as you have the six and a quarter by 54, uh, six and a quarter by 52, it's got a six by 54 uh, uh, Toro, all in box sizes. And then it's got one of the best, one of the most fun sizes that I've had the chance to play with, which I call it the little Sarita, which is this one right here. It's a four and three quarters by 46 uh, bus press Vitola. That is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we release this for the uh, holidays, and the success has been tremendous. We released only 3,000 of these, and we've already, in the first two and a half weeks, we sold 2,200 of them. So it, it was a success that I personally, to be honest, wasn't expecting. Um, but it sure was fun to put it together. Right. No, that's really cool. I, I got a question for Paul and Coop, uh, especially Coop, <clears throat> with the Mexican type wrapper. Do you feel with Omar's, what I think the key ingredient, the acidity level on that can be high? With this, it isn't. Do you agree with that, Coop? With a, with, in general, with a San Andreas wrapper. Yeah, right. But with, that's, Om, with Omar's, it's not. It's not. And that's, my, that's been, you know, for that's folks who listen big, to me on the show, mm -hmm. I'm a, I, I knock a lot of San Andreas for that reason. Exactly. Um, 
Yes, and that's why I like this cigar. There's very limited amount of San Andreas that I can really um, enjoy. And that one, you, you smoke two or three, and next thing you know, you, your throat is just, this because for me, the back of my throat is on fire. Well, I, I think you're trying to pair Mexican wrappers with your margarita and your burrito, and that's, <laughs> that's not, that's not, no, 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 say, it's not that kind of Mexican. away from what I'm trying to say. <laughs> of I'm course saying, I am. <laughs> no, I, I, that, that's what I think stands out for me. <laughs> uh, besides what the cigar stands on its, its, its own, on its flavor profile, but we don't have an acidity level on that type of wrapper that's what that's what stands out the most for me in that cigar that's what so well that's and what omar now correct me if i'm way off base here but i think that really speaks to of course the the farming and cultivation of where you're uh, acquiring that wrapper and then uh either how it's fermented from where you're getting it from or how you're fermenting it once uh once you get it into your own factory correct I really think it's more uh it's more the the blending than anything else exactly uh, that dominican really, really helps that can. out it's, so it's bouncing it, it, it within the blend, more so than, than how the wrapper is, is fermented or cultivated. 100%. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's in the blending. It's, it's like, for example, when we utilize it, we were working it like <laughs> we were working it a lot. We were working on a, on a Connecticut shade uh, wrapper that we had, and um, there is a bitterness about that, about that wrapper that I was not able to, 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 to blend it out. And I know many companies, a lot of companies have, I don't, you know, I, I, I would, I would say that I would personally say that, you know, there's a, there's a handful that do it very, very well, especially, uh, Ernesto, especially that's one that, uh, Coop is smoking today. Um, you, he blended it away and I was, I, we were unable. I mean, we still working. Uh, I'm still working on it. Still, the uh, the jury's still out on how we were able to come out with something like that. But um, it is a very, it is a very, uh, it is. You're right, it, it, Mark. It's uh, it, it, and the guys. It's it is in the blending of of blending. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's good to know. That's no, good information really for, for us and our is. listeners. Yeah. Great job, yeah. Omar. We started doing something new. And are you the first Stoey Geeks guest to answer? You are the first Stoey oh, Geeks no, he, guest. He, he's, He's the second. The second? Did we ask these? We did. Okay, so you're the second Story Geeks guest to make a return appearance on the show and answer our new five questions with the Story Geeks. Oh, wow. I didn't even hear these. Right. Yeah, wait to hear no, these. No, because you weren't here last week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Now, they uh, are heavily derived from the original five questions, which you might probably remember. Most people, it leaves a lasting impression on them. So, you ready for the new five questions? I'm ready. Okay, what is one thing about you that most people do not know? Um, until the other day, it was the fact that I could dance salsa so well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That we secret got uh, leaked, though, right? <laughs> it got leaked. It got leaked. We did a, uh, we did a, uh, a little dance-off at uh, Two Guys Moe Shop, and... Uh, and uh, the the video got leaked, and uh, and people people saw that I can that for a six foot nine man, three hundred pounds, <laughs> I can move. So that's something that a lot of people didn't know before. Nice. But now nice. there you go. So, uh, Omar, choose a song that, in your opinion, best represents. We'll go with the best breakup song. What's the best breakup song, in your opinion? Oh my God, I have a no. Idea. Okay, <laughs> so let's go with name a song that you would play to get pumped up. I have a tiger. One there, you go. Right. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. A little rocky. Omar, <laughs> as, as most people know, the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby is played with teams of three. Choose two people other than yourself to represent Omar's team in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby. I, I don't even know what that game is. I mean, Dude, how much, it's I don't know what that is. I don't even know what that game is. I, I'm so Sandy. behind, you know, paperwork and, and things. That it's I, funny. I gotta get, nice I gotta, job. I gotta get all nice this job. We're like talking that. about Ask Grabby Grabby, and you say you're so behind. So if you had to choose two people to be on your team to play Ask Grabby Grabby, who would they be? Coop and Paul. There you go. There you go. You're stacking the deck with experienced Ask Grabby Grabby players. Don't if you could have them. dinner with one person other than those that you chose to be your parents, who would it be and why, alive or dead, fiction or nonfiction? Bill Clinton. Oh. See, that's my answer to that question. I just think it would be an interesting, because it's like the Family Guy episode. You see the Family Guy episode with Bill Clinton? Yeah. That's a great answer, Omar. 
Omar, outside of the career that you chose or the one that chose you, if you could choose anything, what would be your fantasy career or job? I would be I would be playing for the NBA and then being an NBA president. That would be the president for a for an NBA team. There you wow. go. Great. Omar, the Sixers can use you right now. We could use you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> horrible. Poop, the Sixers could use you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a five foot five white park guy. <laughs> I, might, I think I would be an improvement. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Omar, as always, thank you so much for appearing on the Stoic Geek Show. It's wonderful to talk with you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. God bless you, Omar. Happy your holidays family. to you guys. Uh, keep track of us at uh, at Fertil Cigars. So everybody is listening out there. And uh, happy holidays, uh, Mark. Uh, we'll hope you have an amazing holiday season as well. Paul, you as well. And I uh, hope us get a chance to catch up with you guys again and have this much fun, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Omar. <laughs> well, guys, have a beautiful day. Yeah. You too. We're going to take a short break, come back, and do our debonair ideal segment. So stay tuned.